The first quarter of my career, I had a dependency on on painkillers. Brett Favre, one of the NFL's talented quarterbacks, had his life in knots because of painkiller addiction. Born on October 10, 1969 in Gulfport, Mississippi, he is widely regarded as one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. His journey to stardom began at Southern Mississippi University, where his exceptional talent on the field caught the attention of NFL scouts. Favre was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the second round of the 1991 NFL Draft, but his career truly took off after he was traded to the Green Bay Packers in 1992. Favre's time with the Packers was marked by extraordinary success. Known for his strong arm, competitive spirit, and fearless play, he led the Packers to a Super Bowl victory in Super Bowl 31 and earned three consecutive NFL MVP awards from 1995 to 1997. Favre became a fan favorite, revered for his resilience, charisma, and ability to perform under pressure. However, behind his on-field heroics, Favre was battling a significant personal struggle that threatened his career and well-being, an addiction to painkillers. His struggle began in 1994 after a game against the Philadelphia Eagles when he discovered that he liked the effect of pain pills. Favre's dependence on Vicodin quickly escalated, and at the height of his addiction, he was consuming up to 15 pills at a time. This dependency was not only dangerous, but nearly cost him his life and career. The physical demands of professional football, coupled with the injuries he sustained, led him to rely on painkillers to manage the pain. What started as a means to cope with injuries quickly spiraled into a full-blown addiction. The pressures of being an elite athlete, constantly performing at a high level, and dealing with physical pain contributed to Favre's Favre's dependence on painkillers. In interviews, Favre has candidly discussed how he initially used the medication as prescribed, but gradually increased the dosage to maintain his performance and manage his pain. This escalation is a common pattern in addiction, where tolerance builds up, requiring higher doses to achieve the same effect. In 1996, Favre was temporarily banned by the NFL from drinking alcohol after he admitted he was addicted to Vicodin, and spent 46 days at a drug rehab clinic before the start of the season. His condition was so bad, which eventually led to a deadly seizure. Besides his addiction, his family also went through many trials and tribulations. One day after his father died of a heart attack or stroke, Favre decided to play in a December 22, 2003, Monday night football game against the Oakland Raiders. He completed 73.3% of his passes and finished the game with a passer rating of 154.9, having recorded a perfect 158.3 rating with four touchdowns and over 250 yards passing by halftime. Afterward, Favre said, I knew that my dad would have wanted me to play. I love him so much and I love this game. It meant a great deal to me, to my dad, to my family, and I didn't expect this kind of performance, but I know he was watching tonight. After the death of his father, a series of events related to Favre's family were reported in the media. In October 2004, 10 months after the death of Favre's father, his brother-in-law, Casey Tynes, was killed in an all-terrain vehicle accident on Favre's Mississippi property. Soon after, in 2004, Favre's wife, Deanna Favre, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Following aggressive treatment through 2004, she recovered. She created the Deanna Favre Hope Foundation, which supports breast cancer education and women's breast imaging and diagnosis services for all women, including those who are medically undeserved. Favre's addiction began to affect his life off the field. He has described how the addiction led to erratic behavior, mood swings, and strained relationships with family and teammates. Despite his addiction, Favre managed to maintain his performance on the field, a testament to his incredible talent and determination. However, the toll it took on his personal life was substantial. Among all these problems, more piled on. In 2010, the NFL investigated Favre for a allegedly sexting and leaving inappropriate voice messages for Jets game day host Jen Sturger during the 2008 season. Have you come over tonight? Come here text. Love to see you tonight. He's the big star. He's it. It wasn't it wasn't flattering if that's what you're implying. No. No. He's married. And more than anything, I feel like it was intimidating. According to the NFL, forensic analysis failed to prove Favre sent the objectionable photographs to Sturger. Favre was found not to be in violation of the NFL's personal conduct policy, but was fined $50,000 for failing to cooperate with the investigation. It didn't stop there. Favre suffered from many endeavor scandals and civil lawsuits that damaged his reputation. But let's get back to his addiction problem. The turning point came in 1996 when Favre experienced a seizure related to his painkiller use. This alarming incident forced him to confront the severity of his addiction. Favre has recalled waking up in a hospital bed, confused and scared, realizing that his life was at risk. The seizure was a wake-up call, prompting him to seek help. In his autobiography and interviews, Favre has spoken about the support he received from his family, friends, and teammates during this difficult period. The Green Bay Packers organization also played a crucial role in supporting his recovery, providing the necessary resources and a supportive environment. Favre's return to football after rehab was met with both anticipation and skepticism. Many wondered if he could 
regain his form and continue to perform at an elite level without the crutch of painkillers. Favre, determined to prove himself, worked tirelessly to get back into shape and reclaim his position as the Packers' starting quarterback. The 1996 season following his stint in rehab turned out to be one of the most remarkable of his career. Favre led the Packers to a 13-3 record and a Super Bowl victory, earning Super Bowl MVP honors. This triumph was not just a testament to his skill as a quarterback, but also to his resilience and determination to overcome his personal demons. Favre's battle with addiction had a profound impact on his life and legacy. It highlighted the often overlooked issue of substance abuse among professional athletes, drawing attention to the pressures and physical toll of the sport. Favre's openness about his struggles helped destigmatize addiction, encouraging others in similar situations to seek help. After retiring from the NFL, Favre continued to speak openly about his addiction and recovery, becoming an advocate for mental health and substance abuse awareness. His story serves as an inspiration to many, demonstrating that it is possible to overcome addiction and rebuild one's life. In reflecting on his journey, Favre has expressed gratitude for the second chance he received. He acknowledges that overcoming addiction was one of the toughest challenges of his life, but also one of the most rewarding. Favre's story is not just about the triumphs on the field, but also about the personal growth and resilience he demonstrated off it. Favre's experience with addiction also influenced his perspective on pain management and the use of medication. He has become an advocate for more responsible prescribing practices and greater awareness of the risks associated with painkillers. Favre's journey underscores the importance of addressing and getting support and resources for those struggling with substance abuse. In all transparency, NFL players face a lot of injuries that require serious medications, and getting addicted to some of these medications is very common. Brett Favre was no exception, but what was different about him was he didn't succumb to the addiction completely. Favre fought his way back up through a painful journey, even when many tried to hold him down during this journey. His story is a compelling narrative of triumph over adversity. From his rise to stardom in the NFL, to his battle with addiction and subsequent recovery, Favre's journey is a testament to the human spirit's resilience. Even though he retired in 2011, he retired with accomplishments that can be described with one word, incredible. His awards include three times Associated Press Most Valuable Player in 1995, 1996, and 1997. NFL Offensive Player of the Year in 1995. 11 times Pro Bowl selection in 1992, 1993, 1995 to 1997, 2001 to 2003, and 2007 to 2009. Three times First Team All Pro selection in 1995 to 1997. Three times Second Team All Pro selection in 2001, 2002, and 2007. NFL 1990s All Decade Team. NFL 100th Anniversary All Time Team. Pro Football Hall of Fame Class of 2016. And the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame Class of 2015. Favre owned several NFL records, including most consecutive games started Iron Man streak, 297, 321, including playoffs. Most pass interceptions, a total of 336. Favre has been known as the most successful cold weather quarterback of all time, having compiled a record of 44-17 in games when the game time temperature was 34 degrees Fahrenheit or less. A man of this many accolades is clear proof that one misstep in life doesn't mean you have lost everything. Every day can serve as a second chance, as it did for Brett Favre. Today, Brett Favre is celebrated not only for his achievements on the field, but also for his courage in confronting his addiction and his advocacy for others facing similar battles. That's it for today. What did you learn from Favre's battle against addiction? Let us know in the comments down below. If you're new to this channel, click on that bell icon to be notified about our latest videos. And as always, stay tuned with NFL Insider.